Okay. Well, we, we haven't had a paradigm shift in games in a long time. I think mobile was a paradigm shift and it created a specific type of game and created a lot of new types of games. Uh, but in many ways, from a technological standpoint, it was a step back. So if you were a core gamer, uh, although it opened up the game market, did a lot of amazing things, the games are great, it didn't push gaming forward. So the, the previous paradigm shift to, for me would have been the 2D, 3D shift, mm -hmm. which was a long time ago, yeah. uh, 95, basically, when the PlayStation came out yeah. and, and its competitive platforms. Uh, and that radically changed gaming and made people expect different things from games, opened up games that had never been made before and changed the industry. Here we are, 2016, and we are launching a new way of exploring, interacting uh, with gaming. And it opens up an entirely new set of games that can be made. It also improves games that have already been made. Uh, Lucky's Tale, for example, a character action game, very much like Crash mm -hmm. uh, from the 2D, 3D era. But playing it is a very different experience because you feel in there with the character. So the reason this is important, and the reason VR is so special and so many people are talking about it, is it is a major paradigm shift mm -hmm. in the way that games are consumed. Adam, what would you say? Uh, I would totally agree with that, uh, especially about the jump from like, you know, when mobile was introduced and, and what VR, you know, what I think personally what is gonna happen with VR. Um, from a creator standpoint, um, <clears throat> Not really since, I guess, the PlayStation era have I felt like, I mean, I feel like a kid again. Like, mm -hmm. it's so exciting to make stuff because everything that we know how to make is brand new again. Mm -hmm. Like, every little, every little new thing that we do as developers in VR is, like, monumental. And having to, having to relearn all those things and, like, making mistakes and then new fresh ideas coming out of that is so exciting and it feels like for like for my team in particular and that what I see from the game development community is that it's like starting all over again but every, nobody lost any of their power mm -hmm. and it's like we get you know all these super fresh ideas it's and new game plus yeah and, and also really not since mobile have I seen and it's different but the, the development community is so open and they're sharing everything and like, it's just totally free thinking and uh, really collaborative. So um, the games that I see and experiences that I see on VR are to me more exciting and creative and interesting than maybe what's going on in, in the traditional game industry because it's fueled by all this like new passion. Mm. Yeah. Anything to add to it? Well, you guys said a lot. So <laughs> you, you cover basically from a player's and, and, and general industry perspective, you're talking about from a developer development perspective. I'll talk about more from the being an independent studio perspective. I think you see a lot of excitement within the independent development community because the opportunities right now in VR are huge. And the, what I'm talking about is the opportunity to get in early hmm. on a technology that's re, that is the Wild West. And you'll notice that there are not a lot of behemoths jumping in. Right? You've sure. got companies like ours that are small, that are nimble, that are willing to take creative risks and try something. But at the same time, like Adam said, we're learning these really interesting uh, lessons and we're, we're being faced with these problems that we have to solve to make our games work. And that's what we love doing. And by solving them, I think we're developing new muscles mm -hmm. that help us in, as developers really uh, differentiate ourselves. And that's key when you're in an industry like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason, you mentioned the, uh, the shift from 2D to 3D as being one of those paradigm shifts. And yeah, totally, the first time that I played Mario 64, like I could hardly even believe like, what I was playing and that it was working and how, how immersive it was. So as a gamer, that's really exciting to me to think that we we're like, on the precipice of one of those paradigm shifts that only comes along once every decade in video gaming. But uh, at, at present, the introductory cost to get into VR is not insignificant. Uh, how, you know, regardless of whether or not the investment is worth it, how much of a hindrance do you think that will be to the spread of this new technology? Yeah, I mean, year one is an expensive system. Mm -hmm. These are expensive systems, we know that. Uh, flat screen televisions were extremely expensive. Sure. Uh, pretty much everyone has them in their home. It's hard to find a CRT these days. Mm -hmm. uh, the price of technology comes down. We are just learning, as hardware manufacturers, how to get this incredible uh, display technology on people's heads, how to do input in an appropriate way. As time progresses, we'll find better and better practices, the price will come down. Mm. So 
while yes, today it's easy to say this is a barrier, um, it's not a barrier for a long time. We've seen this happen a hundred times. Like nobody would say the price of this cannot come down. And in, sure. if you can't find someone who can say that, you know eventually the price won't be the hindrance. So then the question is, is there quality content there? Mm. And for me, that's the bigger challenge right now is figuring out what the right kind of content for VR is, figuring out how to get to larger, more complex, more all, you know, more all encompassing games that keep you uh, really in, in the system for, for long amounts of time, bring you back and things like that and getting those larger games. So that's what I'm focusing on and I'm, I'm letting the price take care of itself. Mm. Adam and Ted, while you're making a VR game, is, is the price in your mind, or are you just trying to make you know, the best game you can? Not for me. Yeah. No, we're definitely focused on the content. Sure. And, and something interesting about I mean, where we are today, I think that the, it was a relatively easy transition from us into, in terms of our technology from more traditional games into VR because mm -hmm. engines have gotten so much more powerful. So to be able to run a game at 90 hertz versus uh, today, versus say five years ago or 10 years ago is a much more straightforward process. Even though, as I said before, there are a lot of things we have to learn about how to design appropriately. So it's been a nice confluence of uh, where tech is and a new, having a new platform that allows us to take advantage of the cool things our tech can do mm -hmm. that lets us make that content and, and really push the kind of things that we think people are going to be wowed by mm -hmm. when they put on a headset. When would you guess the price would hit that mass market sweet spot? To put it another way, when is VR the Wii? Yeah, it's really hard to guess. You know, that w we all believe fundamentally that there will be a hockey stick. Mm. When exactly that hockey stick will happen, it's hard to say. Uh, I believe this first generation of software is gonna blow the living, it's just gonna blow the socks off of people, how good it is, and how different it is, and how special it is. Having said that, when you get past three million, five million people, and you get to the real mass market, uh, they need a certain type of pulp game that we don't have this year. They need a polish that maybe a second or third generation game can bring to the market. These are first generation games. Um, I think if the hockey stick happens at a time when those games exist, all the much better. Another reason not to race to get to millions. I'd like the software market to be there and be comfortable and, and, and have everyone understand the rule set of VR mm. before that mass consumer comes in because they're less forgiving of the rough edges. The harder core gamer, the enthusiast, is willing to go into a game and say, this has rough edges, but I'm pioneering. Like, I'm in the beginning of the game, sure. you know, the game frontier, and this is worth it to me. I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to accept maybe menus haven't been figured out very well, right? We don't have a best practices in menus. Sure. It's a little clunky to get in and out of it. Whatever it is, they'll, go, they'll get past it because of the joy of it. You don't get that when you get into the mass market. The mass market wants it to just work. Mm. Sure, yeah. Adam, you have something to add? No, I mean, he, Jason kind of kind of nailed it, but it, it is about, like, it's exciting to be first mm -hmm. and <clears throat> about taking taking those risks and and really, like Jason said, being okay with it's not perfect yet, right? And it's very, it's just very exciting to, to have, like, in our case for our game, like, the thing that turned the... The thing that won me over, it w I mean, it wasn't even a win over. I, like, we got the first Oculus kits at the beginning of making our game, and, and I just wasn't prepared for a piece of hardware to be able to, like, touch emotions of, of, peop of people. Mm -hmm. And that happens in our game. And um, it was too, too important for us to, to not, you know, pick that up and run with it. And, um, you know, I think that this first generation of games are so unique and so cool and different that it is gonna make an impact on people. I think when people get these headsets in their houses and they start showing their friends, mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be a big thing. And like Jason said, you know, the hockey stick when that happens, that's hard to tell. But um, you know, I don't think it's gonna be this year, right? It's gonna take a little time. And I think the kind of games that people are making now, when you get to the second generation, the things that we're making now are gonna look primitive, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when I look at, at games like, you know, Lucky's Tale and, and my game and Ted's game, they look great, they're awesome, but it's gonna be sad when they're, <laughs> when, you know, a couple years old and the things that we're, we can't even think of the things that are coming right now, they're mm -hmm. just gonna be massive.
It's Ted, a, Ted and I were there for the first generation of PlayStation games. Mm -hmm. And the, the stuff that came out at launch, you know, Ridge Racer was an arcade port. Uh, Wipeout was actually one of the first games that came out that was new and did something that you hadn't yeah. seen before in the arcade. But if you look at that launch lineup, it wasn't that great in retrospect. Yet as a gamer and being a, a hardcore gamer and always into games at the time, I played the hell out of those games. I had an amazing time with PlayStation the first year. And the games that came out got better and better. And then a year and two, two years later, Tomb Raider. Tomb. Crash came out, my game. Uh, Gran Turismo. Like, massive, massive games came out that that was the game for the mass market. That first set of games was rough around the edges. It was brilliant. I mean, those, those were pioneers. They got there at launch day. Uh, and if you go back to 3DO, which is even earlier in 2D, 3D, those games were really, really pushing the boundaries with 3D. But they were also really rough around the edges. It was that learning curve that took us to that year, the second generation, a year or two after PlayStation launch, same on Nintendo, same on Sega system, where the games really started to sing. And people, that's when the mass market said, I'm in. Mm -hmm. And 3D just took off. Yeah. yeah. Game launch lineups are notoriously a little shaky. Uh, the Octus Rift launch lineup was revealed this week. I think it's... Super impressive. It's amazing. It's like 30 games. Absolutely. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. But again, like we'll look back on it and we'll say, this is now how you do uh, you know, a third-person character action game. This is now how you do uh, first-person locomotion in zero gravity. There's a better way of doing it because we will learn that from uh, people. Developers will look at the games and they will say, we now have a better way of doing that. And we'll look back on these and say they were primitive. They were also awesome. Yeah. Primitive and awesome.